honoring the dream. The legacy of Dr. King lives on. And the city of Atlanta honors John Portland. That and more next on City Talk. Hello everyone, welcome to City Talk. I'm Thermese Bevel. Atlanta was well represented as thousands lined the National Mall in Washington, D.C. to honor Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Dr. King was memorialized in a 30-foot tall monument. The Martin Luther King, Jr. Memorial was officially dedicated in October. About 50,000 people attended the tribute to Atlanta's native son. Congressman John Lewis says Dr. King's legacy is known worldwide and his likeness on the National Mall will inspire people for generations to come. The memorial is the first on the National Mall to honor a black leader. Morehouse College held a concert to recognize the official dedication of the King Memorial. The event was hosted by Star Trek alum Avery Brooks. Musical legends Stevie Wonder and Michigan Congressman John Conyers were given the Morehouse Presidential Renaissance Medallion of Merit. Both Wonder and Conyers worked tirelessly to make King's birthday a national holiday. The city of Atlanta dedicated a park in honor of the late James Orange. Reverend Orange was a longtime civil rights leader whose activism in his native Alabama ultimately led to the march from Selma to Montgomery and the 1965 Voting Rights Act. He was hired by Dr. King in the early 60s to mobilize young people for the civil rights movement. He was detained more than 100 times for civil disobedience, fighting for those who needed a voice. Reverend Orange worked with a number of national and international civil rights organizations throughout his career. He lived in Atlanta for more than 40 years. Reverend James Orange Park at Oakland City is 15 acres and serves as a tribute to his unyielding commitment to social justice. Councilmember Alex Wan welcomed the Human Rights Campaign's bus tour to Atlanta. The On the Road to Equality tour stopped in Atlanta to spread the message of fairness and justice. The nationwide tour educates the public and empowers people to become advocates for themselves and their families. I commit to you today that I will work to ensure that the City of Atlanta will continue to be a partner with the Human Rights Campaign, Georgia Equality, Atlanta Pride, and other organizations in this effort. The Human Rights Campaign is America's largest civil rights organization working to achieve lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender equality. City Councilman C.T. Martin helped Clark Atlanta University launch its annual Call to True Beauty campaign. It's an education and prevention campaign against domestic violence. So we come today to raise hope for every victim, female and male, who has endured physical pain, humiliation, fear, embarrassment, financial ruin, emotional torment, and worst of all, death. The mayor, my fellow colleagues, and I stand with each of you today. We are committed to raising awareness, raising our forces, and raising up community solutions to this plan. This year's campaign partners with several organizations in the crusade against domestic violence. The city of Atlanta honored John Portman by renaming Harris Street in downtown Atlanta to John Portman Boulevard. Portman, a native Atlantan, has gained international recognition for his work as an architect, developer, and artist who has created major projects throughout the United States and around the world. He has played an active and significant role in civic affairs, contributing to Atlanta's phenomenal growth. He created Peachtree Center by designing and redeveloping 14 city blocks in Atlanta's Central Business District. He is a founding member and leader of Central Atlanta Progress. Portman was the first to open two non-segregated upscale restaurants in 1961. 
Mayor Kasim Reed was honored by Governing Magazine as one of 2011's Public Officials of the Year. Since taking office in 2010, Reed, with help from the Atlanta City Council, has strengthened the police force, reopened all of the city's recreation centers, and increased city coffers from $7 million to $70 million. He recently worked with council and city employee unions to reform the pension system. The mayor has also been touted for his work with the state capitol on issues of affecting both Atlanta and Georgia at large, including the statewide transportation referendum and the proposed expansion of operations at the Port of Savannah. Reed will share the honor with eight other public officials from around the country. The Piedmont Park Conservancy also honored Mayor Reed with the addition of his name to the Mayor's Memory Grove. Reed's name was etched into the marker that holds all of the names of Atlanta's past mayors. The Conservancy also planted a dogwood tree in Reed's honor. The Mayor's Memory Grove is a tradition started by the Atlanta Women's Club in 1925, honoring all 59 of Atlanta's mayors. This is a high day for me. Um, my team is here, Commissioner Duesenberry is here as well, so it's a real special moment. I'm uh, uh, kind of at a loss of words, which is pretty rare for me. <laughs> <laughs> Council members Aaron Watson and Alex Wan joined the mayor at the ceremony. HUD Secretary Sean Donovan and Mayor Reed toured the Edgewood Project in Northeast Atlanta. Last year, the city received almost $5 million as part of HUD's Neighborhood Stabilization Program. That money was used to buy foreclosed properties within the city that had fallen into disrepair. The homes were then renovated and sold. Properties and lots that once sat vacant on the market for months and even years are being developed and rehabilitated, sold to middle class families that have worked hard to achieve the dream of neighborhood stabilization. Donovan was also in town to push Project Rebuild. That initiative expands on the neighborhood stabilization program by using government funds to revitalize commercial properties as well as residential areas. We believe that this is the way forward. The way forward is to determine what problems we have. And we know we have serious problems around foreclosure and the damage that they cause. And rather than bickering, we're actually putting our hands to the wheel and making real progress. Project Rebuild could inject up to $42 million in funding for the city's efforts. German innovation meets an American desire to reduce energy costs and pollution. The traveling exhibit titled Das Haas made a stop at the World of Coke to show off advanced technologies for home construction. The exhibit showcased how new homes in the 21st century could be built more energy efficient using current technologies. Some of the features in the Das Haas pavilion include triple pane glass windows, specially insulated walls, and a roof layered with a state-of-the-art material that generates solar energy. And now the tour for the United States starts here in Atlanta. That is not a geographic coincidence. Innovation in America starts right here in Atlanta. This is why we brought Das Haus to Atlanta. The week-long exhibit also featured presentations on green building by professionals in the technology and construction fields. A campaign to tie over 58,000 names to their faces came to Atlanta in the form of a half-scale model of a famous monument. The wall that heals is a traveling replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, and it made a stop in Centennial Olympic Park as part of the Call for Photos campaign. The national initiative was launched by the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Fund to collect a photo for each of the 58,272 names memorialized on the wall in Washington, D.C. The photos will be part of a permanent exhibit at a learning center that is currently under construction near the Vietnam Veterans Memorial. A new initiative by the mayor's office helps Atlanta neighborhoods love their block. City Talk's Troy Danikis has that story. Anytime we, we do anything to, to help you know, improve the neighborhood and, and uh, make it safer, lots of folks show up. So couldn't ask for a better neighborhood than Cabbage Town. Michael McPherson is the treasurer for the Cabbage Town Initiative Community Development Corporation. The CICDC is one of the latest recipients of the Love Your Block grant, which helps neighborhoods beautify their small part of the big city. A partnership between Atlanta, the Neighborhood Fund, Hands On Atlanta, and the Atlanta Community Tool Bank is fostering a spirit of volunteerism among neighbors. 
The groups were awarded between $500 and $1,000 through a grant by the Home Depot Foundation to fund the projects. Recipients are also eligible to rent free tools from the community tool bank. ATL 26 caught up with the CICDC as they were busy replacing gravel and replanting grass near Crog Street in anticipation of Chomp and Stomp, an annual get-together that honors Cabbage Town's past. We're one of the smallest neighborhoods in southeast Atlanta, so we're a very tight-knit group. Um, we always have good turnout whenever we do a cleanup day, um, and we always have good turnout for our neighborhood events. Grants were awarded in three rounds with one more round due in early 2012. Some of the projects proposed by past groups include beautifying entranceways, planting trees and flower beds, and removing graffiti. Grantees were also expected to track their group's results and to report those results to the city. Success is measured by meeting certain requirements, including how many bags of trash are collected or how many trees and gardens are planted. Everybody, you know, wants to help out uh, and beautify their, their communities and neighborhoods, and the city should be a great partner in that. And as chief service officer, uh, we're looking to help. For City Talk, I'm Troy Danicus. The third round of applications for the Love Your Block program is due February 15th. To get an application for the grant or for more information on the initiative, visit IamAtlanta.org or call 404-330-6385. Coming up, we talk with Rob Johnson from the Atlanta Community Food Bank. And the City of Atlanta takes a swing for youth golf programs. Stay with us. Rob Johnson, Chief Operating Officer with the Atlanta Community Food Bank is with us today. Rob, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Like. The Atlanta Community Food Bank distributed over 30 million pounds of food and other items last year. So there's a huge need for emergency food assistance. There is indeed, um, and that amount was about uh, on the nose 33 percent more than we did in that prior year. And uh, a year ago, we had also grown by 33 percent on the nose. So that means literally over these last two critical years of uh, this economic downturn, we've had to do about 77 percent more work in our community. Some food banks are closing in some parts of the country because this is a tough economic time. What challenges are you all facing here in Atlanta? Well, I think the two unperfect storm that we're experiencing is, is that the demand for food is going up pretty significantly. But also uh, there are signs that uh, the sources of food are getting tougher to get. Uh, last year, uh, almost 30 percent of the food that we received and distributed was very gratefully coming from the federal government through USDA commodities. But uh, we've all been warned that um, because of the federal uh, budget deficit that uh, we need to be prepared for as much as a 30, 40 percent decrease in that source. So we're having to go uh, to the food industry and uh, work a lot harder to find new uh, sources of food. The food bank supports a wide range of people in need. What are some of the programs you offer? Well, our core business, again, is collecting food and getting it out to our grassroots, almost seven, over 700 uh, nonprofit agencies. But besides that direct food distribution, um, we increasingly are focusing on the issue of how to engage the wider community in longer term solutions. Uh, one of our newest programs, the Atlanta Prosperity Campaign, uh, now in its starting its fourth year, is working with our agencies and the IRS and other government entities to make sure that everybody who is eligible for public benefits, like food stamps and WIC, are getting that. Uh, current statistics are maybe only 70 percent of the people in our area that are eligible for those benefits are getting them. So lots of uh, resources that aren't met. Another major program we have is um, uh, our Hunger 101 education program. And we now have two full-time staff who are available either to host uh, school groups, companies to come and learn about what are the root causes of hunger and ways that people get involved. But we're also eager to go out uh, into the community, to church groups, schools. Uh, and maybe finally, uh, one of our favorite and rapidly growing one is we have a uh, long-time community garden initiative and now have two full-time staff who are eager and available to network with neighborhood uh, 
school groups, others who are uh, even here in the downtown uh, urban areas, uh, growing gardens, uh, both uh, to get more good nutritious vegetables on people's plates, but also as a way of collecting uh, a little more produce. And you currently serve 38 Georgia counties? We do. Uh, we uh, primarily have a service area of 29 counties. Uh, we have nine counties up near the Chattanooga uh, border where we jointly serve that with the Chattanooga Food Bank. What kind of food is needed the most? Well, um, for most of the food that we are getting donated, uh, the, uh, particularly where the, the general public and your audience can hear, um, the hardest items for us to get are protein items, uh, good staple vegetables, um, uh, juices, all of those are good. Rices and um, pastas are very welcomed for our agencies. These are the kind of items that we'll collect and then distribute to what we call our food pantry agencies that are serving people who do live in their own homes but do need the, the supplemental food. How can Atlanta residents help the food bank during the holidays? Well, um, listen out. The good news is there are lots of folks, uh, school groups, churches who are doing food drives this time of year. We just had an awesome one that the Atlanta Apartment Association did, uh, uh, their best year ever. Um, as we speak about this time, um, for example, Kroger is going to do a five-week uh, canned hunger campaign both here and around their, their overall market area. So people at the cash register can round up their grocery purchase by a dollar, three or five dollars and uh, all that money will come back to us to help us purchase things that we're not getting. Um, but bottom line is go on our website www.acfb.org and uh, we do have information about how people can uh, do food drives, uh, we can make barrels available for groups that want to do that. Um, we will have, after the first of the year, some more volunteer opportunities to sort uh, and process this food that's now coming in because it does kind of peak here in the, the last couple months of the year. And finally, Rob, the Atlanta Community Food Bank is one of the greenest organizations around. It's a carbon neutral workplace. Um, it is. Um, when we built our new building six years ago, we uh, uh, designed it and built it as uh, one of the LEED certified buildings where we got silver status. And ever since then we have continued to sort of improve how can we operate as sustainable as possible. So uh, recent upgrades have meant uh, redoing all the lighting in our warehouse so it's much more efficient. Uh, we were very fortunate to be one of five nonprofits in the state to get uh, support to install solar panels on our roof. So we're now generating some of our electricity from solar. And finally, uh, as you alluded to, we have now partnered for two years um, with Virus Carbon Neutral, and uh, we do a very extensive monitoring every year of what are all of our operation costs uh, and how does that impact our footprint. And, uh, from recycling and composting and all these other things, uh, we do end up having a small amount that is not green and then we pay uh, into a fund that uh, offsets our carbon footprint in the state of Georgia by helping some other sustainable things. So, um, so yeah, we, we love having this building and also having it be a place where the community can come and learn about sustainability. Uh, so happy to do that. Well, Rob, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, to talk to your audience. When we come back, Georgia leaders gather to discuss moving Georgia forward and construction volunteers improve housing for the homeless. Back in a moment. The Southwest Atlanta Fall Festival was a big hit. The afternoon featured games, prizes, and entertainment for children of all ages. A new addition to this year's festival, a dunking booth that allowed both children and adults to compete to raise money for their schools. Councilman H. Lamar Willis strives to make the event special for each child who participates. This is the third year Councilman Willis has sponsored the festival. 
City Council President Cesar Mitchell and the Department of Parks, Recreation and Cultural Affairs hosted the Alfred Holmes Golf Classic. The event commemorated the 60th anniversary of Holmes' landmark achievement in integrating Atlanta's golf courses. <laughs> golf enthusiasts turned out for the charity, which supports youth golf programs. This tournament today is really about supporting our young people and getting them engaged and keeping them engaged in the sport of golf. I feel honored to be here today and I learned a lot um, prior to coming to this event about everything that Alfred Tup Holmes and, and his brothers had done to, to enable African American golfers like myself to be able to play anywhere around the Atlanta area. And so I think this, this event and honoring him and, and what they've done is, is truly um, a, great, a great event. Organizers hope the Golf Classic will be an annual event. Cesar Mitchell got a chance to share his perspective with those at the 2011 Georgia Forward Forum. Georgia Forward works to improve the state of Georgia by encouraging business, political, academic, and civil leaders to outline a statewide policy agenda. The forum wants leaders to create a common vision for Georgia. The group also looks at how Georgia counties compare with one another on income, economic, public health, water, and education. This year's forum had over 200 Georgia leaders come together at Callaway Gardens to collaborate on policy issues. I had an opportunity to talk about how uh, the slow growth in our economy has impacted how cities and counties uh, are making decisions around policy and service delivery. Uh, and other things that related to economic development. So this has been a great experience. In the course of two days, participants found ways to help our state create more jobs and better communities. President Mitchell was the keynote speaker at the American Bar Association's Construction Forum. The forum is the leading source of reference materials available to construction lawyers. Members of the forum represent all segments of the construction industry, from owners to general contractors, construction managers, and others. Mitchell's address highlighted Atlanta's initiatives and plans to stimulate local economic growth. He also talked about opportunities related to the construction industry, such as the Atlanta Beltline and the Shine Program. Councilman Kwanzaa Hall was on hand as the third annual Homemade Care Day kicked off in the City Hall atrium. Care Day is a community <laughs> service construction project. This year, the group renovated Trinity House Big Bethel and the Mary Hall Freedom House. About 200 skilled volunteers completed repairs and maintenance in both facilities. It really does mean a lot to the city that you're willing to give back, especially in this difficult economic time and, time. and we know that you don't have the same resources that you might have had in your companies three or four years ago, but you're still willing to give, and that, that really does tug at, at our heartstrings. Volunteers say it's very rewarding to give back to the Atlanta community by helping these nonprofit organizations. Councilman Aaron Watson and a group of bikers took the Silver Comet Trail to Alabama. The ride started in Mableton and ended at the Georgia-Alabama state line. The Living Smarter Ride to Alabama was 112 miles round trip with short breaks along the way and an overnight stay in Cedartown, Georgia. Nearly 30 riders from young teens to the mature hit the trail. The ride was part of an ongoing effort to encourage the community to become more active and healthier. Watson says more Atlantans are enjoying the popular trend of biking to work, biking for exercise, or just plain biking for enjoyment. Councilman Watson and school board member Yolanda Johnson sponsored a scholarship fair to help students secure funding for college. The free workshop introduced students to the scholarship application process. Students interacted with local and national scholarship committees to learn the best way to get scholarship money. The seminar was open to Atlanta Public School seniors who have demonstrated a commitment to success either through extracurricular activities leadership initiatives or civic engagement. The scholarship fair focused on two types of students, low wealth students with average GPAs and middle income students seeking merit-based aid. Atlanta's Police Athletic League, PAL for short, held its annual boxing event at the Atlanta Civic Center. The event is the organization's only fundraiser for the year and features amateur boxing from Atlanta's PAL and other chapters around the southeast. 
The Police Athletic League seeks to reduce crime in urban areas by encouraging athletics to steer kids away from crime and bad influences. Other than boxing, PAL offers programs ranging from dance and drama to basketball to track and field. They also offer youth mentoring and help with homework. The fight against breast cancer came to Atlanta in the form of a 60-mile walk. The Susan G. Coleman three-day for the cure took place throughout the city. ATL 26 crews caught up with walkers at one of the many cheering stations across Atlanta. The 60-mile long fundraiser is broken up into three days with each individual or group raising $2,300 to aid in the search for a cure. The money also funds breast cancer education, screenings, and treatments. According to Coleman for the Cure, breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer, with one woman in the world dying of the disease every 69 seconds. The three-day experience is something that when you've completed it, it gives you a new sense of accomplishment, uh, personal strength and confidence in the fact that you are making an impact in the fight against breast cancer. Coleman Three Day for the Cure has raised nearly $600 million since it began in 2003. Here at ATL 26, we're working to give you better access to city government. We'd love to hear from you. Email your questions or comments to citytalk at atlantaga.gov. City Talk is on air and online. Catch us right here on ATL 26, on YouTube, and on our website, atlantaga.gov. Councilmember Joyce Shepherd and Atlanta Fire Rescue teamed up for a car seat checkup and community fair. Atlanta residents learned the correct way to install child safety seats and received health care screenings from local health care providers. This is an annual event to provide the community with safety information that impacts our daily lives. Thank you for watching City Talk. I'm Thurman Spevel.